Followers of Christ were never meant to be closed-minded religious fundamentalists. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Anytime somebody talks about our father, mother, or some genderless deity, they are speaking the language of paganism. They are speaking doctrines of devils. Uh, this this is paganism. Where did you get that from, sir? Well, hey guys, your friend Spencer here. Uh, there was a man in the New Testament named the Apostle Paul, and he had a couple of protégés in the ministry. One of them was a younger preacher named Timothy. And he wrote two letters to Timothy, and he placed a heavy emphasis to this young preacher, telling him that he needs to emphasize doctrine. And he did it right here, of course. I'll just show you in the ESOR program. Uh, 1 Timothy 1.3 talked about doctrine. 1 Timothy 1.10, 1 Timothy 4.6, 1 Timothy 4.13, 4.16, 5.17, 6.1, 6.3. In 2 Timothy 3.10, 3.16, 4.2, 4.3, he all talks about doctrine, 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 doctrine. In the first century church, they heavily emphasized doctrine. That is abundantly clear. But the modern church is not doing that. The modern church is treating doctrine like it's some sort of relic, like... It's almost as if it's a very conservative grandma in a very liberal family. It's, you know, we love you. We're glad you're here. We understand why you're here. But we have a lot more fun when you're not here. And so with that, the emphasis is not really on doctrine anymore in Western churches. The emphasis is on entertainment and flashiness. Feel good, dynamic messages. But just because you gave up doesn't mean God gave up. Your dream may be buried. The good news is it's still alive. And doctrine has just been brushed off into the corner as something like, yeah, we know it's there, but you know, we don't really need it that much. And so when doctrine is diminished in a church or even thrown out of a church completely, several things have to happen. Uh, the character and identity and desire of God then becomes subjective. It's at this point, it's just everybody's opinion. We're just kind of guessing what prevails then is just what sounds good. Now, I want you to imagine in your mind that if you're building something, you're a construction worker, and you've got to make these 18-inch slabs of wood, well, the average construction worker will pull out something like this and would measure off 18 inches, something like that, and would say, okay, this is what we're going to measure that wood by. If you don't have one, if you don't have a tape measure, something that is accurate, and says this is what 18 inches is, then at that point you're just guessing. And if you build a piece of furniture or something that, um, and you don't have a, a standard, a measure of what is 18 inches and whatever, then you're just going to make a monstrosity. And really the Bible, when it comes to theology is the standard by which we measure if this is correct or not. If somebody says something in a theological debate or in a sermon or whatever, uh, this is what we use to measure if it's actually true. And if we don't use this, then we're just guessing. And so when you throw doctrine out of a ministry and you de-emphasize it and make fun of it, make light of it, it creates a vacuum. You, you've got to teach something. And if you're not teaching the Bible, then you're going to teach something demonic. That's when doctrines of devils come in. 2 Timothy 4, 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears away from the truth and be turned unto fables. And so fables come in when doctrine goes out. 1 Timothy 4, 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Well, that's, that's a doctrinal position. Uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. When you throw the faith out, doctrines of devils come in. You have to teach something. And if you're not teaching the Bible, then you're teaching doctrines of devils. And a lot of people would say, you know, Brother Spencer, he's really taking a stand on Christian music. Well, I, I wouldn't put it that way. I think it's more of I've tried to take a stand on Christian doctrine and try to bring people back to orthodoxy. And one of the easiest ways to spot heresy is just look at the music. Usually when there's bad music in a church, there's bad doctrine too. And so if you're building a building and you don't really have a standard of measure, then it just becomes a free-for-all. And that's what Christian music has become today. Just a big free-for-all. And so, you know, there came along 
ecumenicism, Billy Graham, and the, the, the message really wasn't on doctrine anymore. It was more like, you know, we need to unify. We need to set aside our petty little differences, which is a slight at doctrine. You're attacking doctrine when you say that. And we need to unite because unity is really what matters. And when we come together as Christians, then we can all get along and then we can make an impact on the world for God. But the problem is, is that in order to unify like that, doctrine's got to go. And the modern church today has literally sacrificed Bible doctrine on the altar of ecclesiastical unity. And so when doctrine gets thrown out, weird stuff comes in. And then what once was your church is now some pagan temple, but they're still using the vocabulary of Christianity. And this is what's happened in Christian music today. The emphasis is now on what sounds good and who can give you the most euphoric religious experience while you listen to these songs. And doctrine is subjective anyway, so why would we be unnecessarily divisive? That's the logic of today. And so, because doctrine's gone, something's filled the void now in Christian music and in Christian churches. And you see guys like this. This is a group called Ecclesia, and uh, very young people. And this is their Instagram account. And I'm not going to show you this account, everything that's on it, because there actually is nudity on here, which I find to be appalling. But I want to show you some of the posts that he has made. Uh, this guy, if you see, he's he's got pictures of him with the all-seeing eye on his forehead, which you, we've dealt with that in Third Adam. And uh, this is a Christian artist today. This is a guy who claims to be a, a Christian and is making Christian music and you know rising into popularity. Also, he's doing things like this, uh, which is a Hindu dance and just bizarre stuff. And at the same time, he's using Christian jargon and talking about his faith in Christ and love for the Lord the whole time. Uh, here is one that he has done, and, I, and this is just, this is really weird. He's got that contact lens in, and uh, this is what he said. He said, Yeshua embodies this so perfectly as an example for us. We can so easily fall into the way of lawlessness, yeast of Herod, or the way of legalism, yeast of the Pharisees. Uh, both are antichrist. The narrow way is the way of spirit and truth, the way of endless freedom and sacrificial love. In this path, you learn that all things are pure to those that are pure. In this path, you learn that the, that that love is the best way. In this path, you tr many try to catch you and heap labels upon you, but you are free in the flow, caught up in the wind. The wind blows wherever it p pleases. They hear it sound, but they cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now that, to the untrained eye, that sounds okay. But really what that is, is I'm just going to be what I am and believe whatever I want to believe. And I'm not going to let anybody pin me down on any label. And that basically this is the language of people who have said that doctrine does not matter. And thus, God becomes subjective, and monstrosities like this show up. Now, let me show you this right here. This is another picture of him and uh, with that just grotesque contact lens in. But this is what he said. He explains the contact lens and what he's doing here. And he says this. He said, The orange and blue eye is a symbol of heavenly vision, perfect balance of spirit and truth. Only with the eyes of Christ can we begin to participate in the redemptive work of the gospel, calling out the gold and light where most people don't have the prophetic sight to see it. This is what Father, Mother, God does for us. And we get to co -lay in this work with our families, institutions, and with the earth. What? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Followers of Christ were never meant to be closed-minded religious fundamentalists. Where did you get that from, sir? This is the language of a man who has thrown doctrine to the wind and just believes that God is whoever he wants him to be. I mean, that's just how it is. Now, let me show you just for a moment some of this new video that they have put out and it's called Narrow Way. And I, I want you to see if you catch anything as we watch this together and uh, and see what what is actually going on in this music video. There, there is a ton of things, if you're up to speed on some of this stuff, uh, that we'll see here. And I wanted to show it to you real fast. Let's check this out together. And... Um now, it's obvious to me that these people have some musical talent, and, and that's all good and well. Uh, but just watch and see if, if you can catch any symbolism or anything just strange in the things that they're doing. And uh, some of the, I mean, the, the lyrics are incoherent. It's just basically peppered with uh, Christian cliches. But you notice he's got the contact lens in, and they're all doing these dance routines and whatever. 
Um, this video has got, uh, I think, about twelve to 15,000 views on YouTube and uh, overwhelmingly popular with a lot of, with a certain group of young people. Now, this isn't some viral hit you know, thing, uh, but this is something that... Uh, it just it's just weird it just is weird what they're doing but i went ahead and broke it down for you guys some of the things that i saw here in this video i saw a lot of occult symbolism and let me show you this as we as we get into uh what they actually did now if you notice on his on his coat there he's got the all-seeing eye all in there uh there's a phoenix actually on his left side as well all of this is masonic occult symbolism that he's just blatantly putting on his coat and there you go you can see the phoenix you can see the stars you can see uh you can see all that there uh, guys that is that is just weird i mean like the the pope isn't that blatant with his symbolism uh, you can see the moon uh here on the left side you can see the the sun uh this this is paganism uh, also i want you to show that there there's actually several hindu type dances that are being done in this music video and if you'll notice the the three person choreography and uh how that they're standing behind each other putting their arms out like this uh this this is a hindu um, dance and this is there, there's several different ways that they do this but this uh, there's the dance of Kali uh, which is her death dance and then there's also the destruction dance of Shiva and uh, things like of that nature uh, but when you see things like that just note this is not Bible Christianity at all this is this is new age stuff and I want to go back to his um, to what he's saying here on his Instagram post uh, he said this is what Father God wants for us this is what the Father God does for us when we get to co-labor in this work with our families, institutions, and with the earth. Guys, I want you to know that God is our Father. God is not our mother. Anytime somebody talks about our father, mother, or some, uh, some genderless deity, they are speaking the language of paganism. They are speaking doctrines of devils. That's exactly what this guy says right here. This is what Father, Mother, uh, uh, let's see here. This is what Father, Mother, God does for us when we get to co-labor in this work with our families, institutions, and with the earth. Followers of, notice this, followers of Christ were never meant to be closed-minded religious fundamentalists. That is dangerous talk. There's some things out there that can't be subjective. And I want to tell you, when it comes to Bible doctrine and when it comes to who God is, we have to be specific about this because if we if we just say, well, let's just, you know, let's just guess at it and then hope for the best and just throw this Bible to the side, uh, you're, you're rolling the dice in your own soul. And so guys, with this video right here, with this this young man, this this singing group, Guys, this is dangerous, dangerous stuff they're playing with. And you parents that are out there, I want to encourage you. Christian music is not what it used to be. Christian music is dangerous. Christian music is is being infiltrated by New Age mysticism, by Hinduism, and by Buddhists pretending to be Christians. This is dangerous stuff. This is stuff that you need to get your family as far away from as you possibly can. Guys, I, I'm just I'm burdened today because there are a lot of people out there that are misrepresenting God in such a wild, insane way, and it scares me to death. I don't want my family in a church like that. I certainly don't want your family in a church like this. And so use our website, independentbaptist.church, independentbaptist.church, and uh, you can help. Uh, you can get your family into a good, solid church right there and uh, check that out. Also, stick with us here on this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. And we do live streams every Thursday night. We do a members-only live stream on Monday night. So become a channel member, and you can get in on that one. And we're going to be teaching the Bible and things of that nature. So, guys, we love you. And uh, look... <sighs> This stuff is sick. That's going on right now. This isn't a game. And I want to warn you, this is dangerous stuff. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.